What's changed since the Damian Lillard and Drew Holiday trades across ADP data and rankings on fantasy sites? We'll dig into the last seven days of data and take a look at it here, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen. Every day we are free. We are available on all platforms. Okay, so I didn't know that I was going to get to this today, but I made time to do it after the Drew Holiday deal. Let's take a look at the players that have moved around on ADPs and rankings and my rankings and how it's all changed over the last seven days. We'll get into that and we'll just stick. Well, let's have a look what's changed over at uh, Basketball Monster. So, when we have a look at the the moves here over on Basketball Monster as to what has actually changed over the last, uh, what do you call it, the last 20, 24? I don't know what I'm trying to say. The last, yeah, seven days. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, the movements that have made. The first column there is my regular rank. The second one is a minus one rank, which is, I think, something we should be paying more attention to. Anthony Simons, I've moved up 33 spots overall, and you understand that I don't manually move guys around. It's just to do with projection updates. Why, you might ask, did I move Simons up even though I said that most of my projections were um, banking on Lillard not being there? Well, it was just stuff that I heard that they were going to focus on him a lot as a number one offensive option, so I just boosted his usage up quite a bit and gave him like an extra minute. And, and that, that's how that's how little it takes to move up that much at that period of the draft. Bam Adebayo also moved up 12 spots in minus one rankings because Damian Lillard didn't arrive. So the Miami projections were sort of half in the middle if Lillard's going to be there. What's this role going to be? Um, do they get another guard? Who knows? I was sort of trying to be cautious with it, but now we know that they're not getting him. So at a bio, I, I kept his uh, usage a little bit higher and I moved his assist rate a little bit up as well. And that moved him up from a guy that was probably end of the third round into middle of the middle of the third, uh, start of the second sort of an area. Also, I started second, end of the second round. John Ray Aiton also moved up 18 spots. Now, if I had done this show two days ago, his ranking would have jumped up like 30 spots. But because Robert Williams ended up in Portland, I did just knock a minute or two off Aiton. I thought he might play 33 or 34, given the backup situation in Portland. The fact that Rob is there might have an impact on maybe some rebound numbers, but also just playing time. Maybe it's just two minutes off. So while there is a big improvement of Aiton, that Williams acquisition hurts slightly, assuming that Williams is going to stay there, which is what we believe at the moment. Jim Butler, much like Bam Adebayo, with Lillard not arriving, I had to give him more playmaking opportunities. So he went up eight spots because they just don't have any guards, really any playmakers. And I don't expect Lowry to be playing a huge amount. So Butler moved up eight spots in my minus one rankings because I was just being really cautious about how to project him out. Chris Murray... Also, now I'm doing all these jumps here in terms of rankings based on percentage so that the guys at the top, even if they move two, three spots, it's more impactful than someone moving 100 spots later on. But Chris Murray moved a lot, 92 spots, because I didn't think he'd necessarily be a rotation guy, but at the moment, he's going to have to be. Like, There's not a huge amount happening there with their forwards, so he moved up 92 spots. It's not draftable. We're not talking a 12 or 14 or 16 team league player, but he's probably going to have to play rotation minutes. And then interestingly... I didn't know that this was the case because, again, I don't manually move the names around on the board. But Luka Doncic moved up two spots in my minus one rank. Now, there's two ways to look at that. Did he move up because there was a slight change in the value of guys like Giannis and Damian Lillard? Yeah, that's possible. Well, that is part of it. But also, with the rumors in Dallas that Olivier Maxence Prosper and Derek Lively are going to start the first preseason game. If those guys are actually starting opening night, I'd expect their usage to be lower than Josh Green and Rashawn Holmes. And adding those lower usage rookies into the mix probably helps guys like Luca and like Kyrie 
get a little bit of a boost into their overall um, usage numbers and helps them out somewhat there. Not that those guys would sacrifice much for Rashawn Holmes, but when you get a really, really big sort of decrease, which I think Lively and Prosper might be, then I'm just going to default to give those half a shot, 0.3 shots towards a Luca and a Kyrie. So Luca jumped up two spots in my um, in my minus one ranking situation there. Today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Tickets to events. Sometimes I'll say that and you might get a shiver. Ugh, I don't have to deal with that. I don't have to deal with trying to find these best tickets for the right price or deal with what the hell are these hidden fees that are on this app. I don't want any of that. Game time just simplifies it all. It's fast. It's easy. You get tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, theater events that you want to go to. Killer last minute deals, all in prices, which shows you the price that you pay bang right on the ticket instead of having to worry about processing and transaction fees and environmental charges or whatever else they're throwing at you just to try and steal more money from you. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I really like their zone deals where you pick the section of the area of the arena or the stadium that you want the ticket and game time will just select you the seats and you get an average of 18% on savings. So you don't pick your specific seat. You say, game time, I want to sit here. And they go, all right, I got it. And they choose you a seat and you get savings on that as well. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L O C K E D O N N B A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Um we should go back in and look at some more basketball monster changes, I think, if I could find exactly where I am. Yeah, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it, Josh? Let's go back and have a look at some more basketball monster rank adjustments over this um, last seven days. I did drop Damian Lillard down. I still think Damian Lillard is going to be strong, but I did drop him down. Uh, He went down three spots on minus one. Just losing a little bit on assists, perhaps. Maybe losing a little bit on free throw attempts, which really spiked for Dame last season. And a little bit of usage drops him down three spots. I still believe that Lillard is a first-round guy. Yusuf Nurkic dropped down a lot, 31 spots. And you go, well, Josh, that's easy. It's much better for Nurkic in Phoenix because he won't get shut down. I'm talking on per game production numbers. And I had Nurkic relatively high, even though I had a limited um, confidence in how he was going to be healthy. But in Phoenix, the usage just isn't going to be there. He's a better passer than Aiden, but that doesn't mean that he gets to pass on this team. And I just don't think he's necessarily going to play Huge minutes. I think that Eubanks will cut in a little bit, but they'll also run with some lineups with KD at center. So Nurkic dropped 31 spots for me. Still really like him outside the top 100, but I had him at like 70-ish before that. So he drops way down. That's on per game. Dan Gafford dropped down 22 spots. And part of it was I was looking back through his projections and I just had his block rate too high. So I went in and made adjustments and he could easily get there. And then of course the news came out that Gafford got injured. Today, hurt his elbow out two to four weeks and might miss the beginning of the season. That, I think, is going to enable Gafford to be an absolute draft day steal. I think he will fall comfortably outside the top 100, maybe top 110, and I will still take him everywhere in those scenarios. I have no idea who is going to start for them. It's probably going to be Taj Gibson, but he's no real, real risk to hold down that job all season. So this is probably good for getting Gafford late in a draft. Giannis dropped down two spots in my minus one, five spots in my regular ranks. Again, just a little bit of an extra hit on usage. Lillard replacing Drew helps that out. Um, so I just dropped him down a couple of spots. I still think he's a nine or 10 sort of a player, but it just hurts marginally in terms of that minus one rank. With the addition of Grayson Allen, Yusuf Nurkic arriving um, in Portland, and even this year, Little, I dropped Kater Bates Diop down. He went down 68 spots. I thought there was a chance he'd play 25 minutes and be a starter. Now I think that the chances of that are significantly reduced. So he went down. And the same with the rumor about Derek Lively in, well, not rumor, Jason Kidd literally said it. Um, Rashawn Holmes down 54 spots in terms of minus one rank. I thought he might play 25, 26. But if they're already saying Lively is a preseason starter, that doesn't mean Lively is the starter in the regular season. But it gives me a fair indication he's going to have a nice, decent crack at being a rotation player. And then with um, Holmes there, with Lively there, with the Oreo Dwight Powell in action as well, like it's going to be hard for Holmes to push into 27, 28. So I've dropped him down. And he just really is now... Strictly only a flyer, I think. I don't really think you could suggest that he's anything more at this point. That'll bring us now to talk about some changes in Yahoo. Yahoo hasn't made any rank changes in the last seven days, but some Yahoo ADP changes over the last seven days. Again, I'm using it as a percentage of that number so we see how the movement happens at the top 
Kyrie moved up one spot, so drafting one spot higher. I don't know that that's because of the lively and prosper situations, the same way that I moved Doncic up, or maybe it's just that Kyrie was pushed up their rank board, so he's getting drafted higher. I would say the latter is probably more obvious. Mark Williams jumped up seven spots as well. That's because, again, his ranking had been insane, and now it is more in line with where it should be. I think Williams is going to beat even where his current ranking is pretty comfortably, but he's moved up in ADP seven spots, and Pat Williams has moved up eight spots as well. This is just really ADP trailing rank data. Um, You'll see this happen all the time when there are guys incorrectly positioned, I believe, and then they get adjusted, the ADP just starts to follow. And there are some people who do believe that Yahoo ranks get adjusted based on ADP. It's the other way around. They adjust the ranks and ADP tends to follow the rankings. It just is delayed by a week or two. And you saw that with those two players there. Both Shea and Giannis, Jesus, both Shea and Giannis jumped up one spot in ADP. I think it is just worth mentioning that that happened. Um, I, in the FBI LOFB World Cup, The draft started today. I had number three pick, and I took Shea Gildas-Alexander at number three. I was really debating between him and Luca and Halliburton, and I don't think there's a wrong call there, but I took Shea there. Shea had been falling to six or seven in some drafts, so um, he moved up that one spot. Interesting that Giannis moved up a spot even with Lillard arriving. It's a little curious. And Trey Young moved um, moved up one extra spot there as well. In terms of the guys that dropped over on Yahoo, Jaron Jackson moved down one spot. That's because the rank moved down a couple of weeks ago. So we're seeing um, the ADP start to catch on. End of second round is fine for Jaron, and that's where it's trending towards. Don't really know this one. Mitchie Robinson dropped down four spots. Okay, I guess his name was mentioned in some trade room somewhere, but I don't know. I, I, look, he is totally okay towards the back end of a draft. I think he's relatively limited in terms of upside, but falling four spots is a little curious. Jace Tatum dropped down a spot. Is this a Drew Holiday factor? It shouldn't be. And it's really too early to say that, but he moved down a spot. Embiid moved down a spot. Not really sure why on that one either. Uh, Brooke Lopez moved down too. That's absolutely to do with the Damian Lillard spot. And he will continue to fall, would be my guess. I don't know what that noise was. Uh, He will continue to fall, Brooke Lopez. And Walker Kessler dropped down one spot as well in ADP. And I think that's reasonable. I'm not a big fan of Kessler in the spots that he has been going. In terms of ESPN rank changes, they made some. They made a couple, but some wildly big ones. Shaden Sharp moved up 38 spots. I'm a little worried that Sharp is fine. Late pick. I don't think he's. I'm not sure he's going to do anything for fantasy this season. But he's moved up 38 spots. Malik Beasley's moved up 25 spots after the Lillard arrival. I guess the expectation is he could start there uh, instead of Pat Connaughton or Amajon Beauchamp. They actually signed campaign today, which was very much needed. They needed to get that extra point guard in there, and I think that hurts some of these guards like. Um, Beasley and Connaughton and Beauchamp because it means that there's less need for someone like Middleton to play second unit and run as the point guard. So there's fewer minutes for those other guards in there. So while they don't play the same position, Payne and Beasley and those players, but Payne's acquisition means that less of Middleton running that second unit, meaning that you have fewer minutes all around for those guards. Jalen Johnson, for some reason, moved down 82 spots, an aggressive drop in ranking. I don't know why. And Trey Murphy moved down 60 Fair enough. Again, with his injury, I get it. Jeremy Grant moved down 19. That seems false. Not false. I mean, it's true, but why? Why would he move down 19 spots? I cannot understand that at all. With Lillard gone, Aiton arriving, like, what are we doing here with Grant? Why is that 19? That's confusing to me. Very confusing. And Ben Simmons dropped down too. And I don't think anything really happened to suggest that Ben should drop down. If you believed where he, what he was doing, then nothing has changed since then, I don't think. But there were some interesting changes. The sharp one up, the Grant one down just makes no sense. And then Trey Murphy dropping down 60 spots on ESPN's ranks. We're going to talk about ESPN's ADPs now as well. Um, I'm still calling cap on some of this stuff. And I know that sounds stupid for me to say the word cap, but hey, I'm trying to relate to the kids. How on earth, in seven days, is ADP data changing this much? Unless their ADP numbers are strictly based on what has happened over the last seven days and they don't use historical data at all, is that they just reset the ADP each week, which I guess is possible because there are some big, big changes. Jordan Poole moved up 19 spots. 100% I am behind that. Jordan Poole, for me, is a third-round player in categories and points. Anthony Edwards moved up five spots. Well, I'm not quite as behind that one as I am on others, but 
interesting. Paulo Bunkero moved up, what, 15 spots? Again, that seems like a lot. Paulo's ADP has gone from over th- two or three weeks, he went 63. Yeah, let's double check this, sorry. He, no, he went from 82. What the hell is going on here? 82 to 55 to 40 in 14 days. I'm sorry, there's something that's wrong. There's something completely off on that. And at 40, you're embarrassing yourself if you take him in a category league at 40. In a points league, maybe. But why did it jump 40 spots in two weeks in increments? Austin Reeves moved up 23 spots. A few weeks ago, Reeves was dropping down because of, I believe, the performances at the World Cup. But his ADP has gone from 128 two weeks ago to 91 to 68. 68, also an insane number. I cannot really trust these ADP numbers. I don't know what is going on with them. Devin Book is an interesting one. He was at 15. Well, he's actually improved as well. 19 to 15 to 12. He went up. He's at 12 now. That's too high for Booker. No way I want... I like Devin Booker, and I think he can be first round around if you pick him 17 or so. At 12, uh, I don't really get that. While Mikael Bridges, who was... Where is Mikael Bridges? On my list here. He went from um, 49 two weeks ago into 37, into 31. Bridges at 31 for a points league is about right. For a category league, it's maybe a little bit low, but it's not too far away. But ESPN ADP is changing wildly, basically basically every day almost. It's so much stuff is happening there. Um, the guys that dropped on ESPN, you've got Jimmy Harden going down nine spots. Still so much uncertainty around where Harden is um, going to end up. Harden's ADP at the moment is out to 36. Amazing value. Unbelievable. Look, it was amazing last week. Or is it 27? He's at 36 now, Jimmy. Ja Morant has dropped down at 20 spots. Now, Ja Morant's one was in a uh, pretty high spot at 63. He's out to 83, and that's providing... What the hell has gone? Ja Morant's ADP. Here we go. It, two weeks ago, it was 27. Now it's 63. Now it's 83. A draft is really making that many moves over that time frame. Again, something is off. Massively off. Fred Van Vliet has dropped down um, 15 spots. His ADP was 52. Come on, what is going on here? Fred Van Vliet's ADP is 67. I'm sorry, what? There's no way. I, I'm, I have to pause this. I have to go double. I've, to, I've double checked. I've got to triple check this. I'm sorry to report it's actually true. Wow, what is what is happening? 67 for Fred Van Vliet. Sign me up every day of the week. Drew Holiday. Is his ADP adjusted this much, even though the trade just happened? I doubt that. But Drew has now moved down nine spots. If I have a look at where he was before that, Drew has seen his ADP go from 42 to 47 to 56. 56 is actually more in line with the hit where he should go. Probably in the 60s is probably more realistic. And it is very curious to see that Victor Wembanyama's ADP continues to fall. It was way too high at 18. Then 27, uh, 23, now it's at 27. 27 is still too high, but it is trending downwards. And then a very, very quick adjustment on Rob Williams, whose ADP went from 75 out to... I'm sorry, what is that number? Uh, sorry, went from 75 two weeks ago to 106 to 125. Now, I actually get that. In a points league, you don't draft him in the top 120. In a category league, probably not in the top 100. But what a wild change. Over two weeks, he's dropped 50 spots. This is what I mean. The, the numbers are dodgy. There's something off with them. I don't know who's or how they're being collated or what the information is, but something is, uh, I would say, very clearly off about how those ADPs are working. So it brings us into the last one, which is some changes over on fan tracks. Nothing major happening over there, but we better go in and have a squeeze at it. Josh Richardson had the biggest jump in ADP. He went up 23 spots. I guess part of that is the failure to land a Damian Lillard trade. Karis Levert went up 11 spots. They're both fine to me as late round picks. Kelly Oubre up nine spots. I don't think I'd bother with him in a 12. He's more of a 14 to 16 team league guy. And then Anthony Black. I feel like he's on the fan tracks ADP changes every week. He dropped down nine spots. Every week. But Derek Lively continues to fall on fan tracks. He should be going way up. Way up. He has to be, at this point, a late round pick. A round 11, round 12, round 13 pick Derek Lively. But he keeps falling by nine spots. And Caleb Martin fell nine spots. Not really sure why he would have fallen with Lillard not being traded there. Not that I'm big on Martin. I wouldn't draft him in 12-team leagues. But also don't think that he needed to necessarily 
go backwards, which is what has happened here. And that is the end of the Monday Movers Show. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey and on YouTube. Thumb it up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.